Good morning. Pastor Selena Johnson here from Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Georgetown. We are the oldest African-American congregation in the nation's capital, and I'm blessed to be serving there. We have been in a series uh, these past a few months called The Great I Am, and this is the eighth and final installment in the series. It's called I Am Above the Chaos. I am above the chaos. So there's this beautiful little word that has been trending these days in the news. I don't know if you've heard it. It's uh, The word is endemic. Endemic. Mm. And when I first saw that word in the news stories, it sparked a feeling of hope right here in my heart. I feel hopeful that after all of uh, this efforts, all of our efforts to love our neighbors through getting tested, through getting vaccinated, um, staying at home, wearing masks, social distancing, all of these things, that finally the God of the universe perhaps is taking mercy upon us and causing this thing to recede naturally. Oh, hallelujah. My heart just got a little twinge of hope when I saw that word. I feel that way also when I read our scripture for today, which is in John chapter 16, uh, John chapter 6, verses 16 through 21. Jesus is walking on the water to his disciples, and right in the midst of the storm, he says to them, Do not be afraid. I am. I am. Let us pray. Lord, you are, you are, you are. You are from everlasting to everlasting, the great I am who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah. And so we thank you that on today you come to us with this word. I pray that you would remove me from myself so that we might hear this word and may the meditations on our hearts and the words that I speak be acceptable in your sight because you are our strength. You are our redeemer. Amen. Often in the Bible, water represents chaos. For example, in the book of Revelation, which we are studying on Thursday nights, um, there's a woman that gives birth to a special child in chapter 12. Uh, but there's a dragon that's trying to attack the child before he can even come to life. And, uh, but heaven snatches the child up before the dragon can get the child. And, but then, the dragon, not to be outdone, starts to pursue the woman with uh, this raging river of water. And the water is gushing out of the dragon's mouth, pursuing her. Is there anybody here who's ever felt like that? About your life, that evil is like a gushing river pursuing you? Hmm. Well, if you read on in Revelation chapter 12, the woman uh, uh, is rescued by God. Again, the great I am who is above the chaos. And so God rescues her from the chaotic waters in Revelation 12. Then if you go to the other book end of the Bible, if you go to Genesis, the book of Genesis, you see in Genesis chapter 1 that the water was chaos. The pre-creation water was chaos. And in Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was dark and without form, void. Uh, and darkness was upon the face of the deep water. And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the water. Right? And then it talks about how God began to speak creation into existence. And God said, and so, but first, God hovered over the chaos and created order. Amen. Finally, in our text today, we see water as chaos in John chapter 6. We see the stormy waters um, that were on the Sea of Galilee as the disciples attempted to cross over to Capernaum. Here we see a very perilous situation. Um, Jesus, Jesus' disciples... Uh, constantly had excitement and adventure in their following of Jesus. Amen. And we should as well. So, so they're having another dramatic moment here in John chapter 6, um, where the water is chaos. 
it says in verse 17 that it was getting dark and they were going through the chaos. It was dark, friends. And, and do any of you understand going through chaos in the darkness? Hmm. Verse 18 of our text says, the water was getting rough because a strong wind was blowing. Some of you understand being tossed into it. Some of you do. Driven by the winds, the, the raging waters of life that make you feel small, that make you feel insignificant, perhaps make you feel afraid or uh, feel like nobody. Then in verse 19, it says, when the wind had driven them out for about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the water. Oh, hallelujah. He was approaching the boat and they were afraid. I'm not sure if they were more afraid of the storm or of this apparition coming towards them on the water. Anyway, notice how it describes Jesus as walking on the water. This water was chaotic. It was topsy-turvy, wind-blown. There were probably high waves tossing the boats to and fro, but it wasn't affecting Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. He was above the chaos. So often when we tell this story of Jesus walking on the water, which is a famous story from the Bible, we often like to rush to the part where Jesus quiets the storm or the part where they get to the other side safely. But John is taking some time here in the part where they were in the middle of it, in the middle of the storm. And John focuses our attention on how Jesus was already above the waves. He was already not swayed by the winds because Jesus cannot be blown away by any earthly thing. Oh, hallelujah. Let me just say that again. Jesus cannot be blown away by any earthly thing. <laughs> you know, he's not like those, sometimes you see those balloons on the sides of the road, like when you're traveling down, you see those advertising balloons and the wind is blowing and they're just, you know, just... <laughs> no, Jesus is not like that, friends. And he is above it all. He's above all of our circumstances, above uh, all of the noise, above all nature, even above all chaos. Oh, hallelujah. So this sermon series uh, has been focusing on the I am statements of Jesus. And when we read the English translations of the Bible, we see that there are seven direct I am statements there. Um, I am the bread of life, Jesus says. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. However, when we look at the original Greek for this statement, I am, we see that Jesus uses this important phrase other times in the book of John. And so there are seven direct I am statements, but there are also nine indirect I am statements in the book of John. And John 6 and 20, which we heard this morning, is one of them. And so in most traditional translations of this passage into English, it says, as Jesus approached them walking on the water, he said, don't be afraid, it is I. But that phrase, it is I, is actually the Greek phrase, ego a me, ego a me. And this is the same phrase that Jesus uses in the direct I am statements. A me literally means I am or I exist. So we see that Jesus is proclaiming, I exist. Don't you know the scriptures also tell us that um, uh, uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those that come to God must believe that God exists and that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek God's face. Oh, hallelujah. I exist. So I love how the common English Bible translates this John uh, 6 and 20. They, they saw Jesus walking on the water. He was approaching the boat and they were afraid. And then verse 20 says, he said to them, I am. Don't be afraid. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Jesus literally is saying to the disciples, because I exist, 
you don't have to be afraid. Ego, Amy, you don't have to be afraid. I am above your chaos, above your noise, your fears, your turbulence. Oh, hallelujah, superior to it all. Doesn't that give you a little twinge? I hope that gives you a little twinge of hope right there in the middle of your heart. <laughs> Friends, Jesus is above your chaos. Whatever winds are blowing, whatever storms are brewing, stirring, tossing, turning in your life, just know that Jesus is on top of it. He's above it all. That's why we need to be tethered to the Lord. Amen. That's why uh, the modern day psalmist Miller uh, wrote in his song, he, he said, though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell night from day. Still, that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. And then he goes on to write, but if the storms won't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Oh, when the storms keep on raging, when the winds will not cease, Jesus comes right in the middle of it. If your soul is tethered to him. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Oh, other ground is sinking sand. I can testify, friends. I can testify, and I know some of you can as well. These past couple of weeks when they announced that Colin Powell had died and he was struggling with multiple myeloma, memories of my mother came back because she struggled with that same disease, multiple myeloma. And I recall my freshman year in high school when she first got the diagnosis, my world just became topsy-turvy. My world had been pretty steady, even, no drama until then. And then it just got turned upside down. And when she passed four years later, when I was a freshman in college, I did not know who to hold on to. I was drowning, friends. I was sinking in the sand. I, I was doing well academically, yes, but emotionally, spiritually, I was drowning. I was sinking in the sand. You know why? Because I didn't know who to hold on to. I could not understand why this was happening. I felt ashamed. I felt cursed. I, oh, I felt like people were talking about me. Oh, you know, oh, she's the one whose mother died of cancer. Though they were looking down on me and, and pitying me. And I couldn't understand what was happening because at that time, friends, my soul was not anchored in the Lord. Mm, my soul was not tethered to the solid rock at that time. I was not saved. That's what I'm telling you. Church, I remained in this tumult for 15 years. Anybody here ever been in a long, long struggle? Ever had a dark night of the soul that you thought was never going to end? But I have good news for you this morning because morning does come. After night does come day, morning by morning, new mercies. Hmm. Years later, when my father passed and he had cancer too, it was a different story. Jesus makes all the difference, friends. Yes, I was sad. Yes, I was grieving and I felt the same waves tossing me around and turning me at his passing. But do you know what the difference was? My soul had been anchored in the Lord. Just like a water skier is tethered to the boat that is pulling them along uh, and they have to hold on tight to that, to that tether. My soul was tethered to the Lord. 
uh, I now trusted Jesus that he had my father in his hands. I now trusted Jesus that he had my mother in his hands. I now trusted Jesus that he had my soul in his hands. Friends, you don't have to spend years in tumult and torture when Jesus is right there always to raise you up above the chaos. Well, as I close, I want to say that Mount Zion, we've been celebrating our 205th anniversary this month. October is our anniversary month. And each Sunday we've had a history highlight that we've heard from the great cloud of witnesses that have led and served at Mount Zion. Some served at very pivotal times, times when things were shifting and changing and turning and churning and times that probably seemed chaotic to them. But when we heard the history highlights, I was encouraged and reminded of their faith. I believe that Reverend Foy was inspired by Jesus, the Jesus of justice, the Jesus who inspired him to testify against gentrification laws in Georgetown, against the tumultuous upheaval of Georgetown's black residents from their homes. I believe that Reverend McGowan is a witness uh, looking down on us from above through that great cloud of witnesses and that he was here during the changing ocean tides, but he had a vision from Jesus, get a bus and bring the people in to worship. God has appointed and anointed so many faithful servants, both clergy and lay persons to serve here at Mount Zion. And so throughout these two centuries and one half decade, there have been many dangers, toils, snares, and yet by keeping connected to Christ, tethered to the Lord, anchored in the Lord, this church has survived. Mm. Church, we are right now in a paradigm shift right now. Right now, the world, our nation, our city, our church are in transition. We are experiencing watershed moments that are happening right now. Pandemic, endemic, uh, uh, the great resignation, racial reconciliation. My prayer is that uh, from outside at such a time as this, that God would keep us above the wave so that we can not only survive, but thrive. Oh, hallelujah. And as I was reading my Bible readings a few weeks ago, and I was praying this prayer over Mount Zion, the Lord brought me to Psalm 126. And in Psalm 126, the ancient song has declared this. When the Lord changed Zion's circumstances for the better, oh, hallelujah, it was like we had been dreaming. Our mouths were suddenly filled with laughter. Our tongues were filled with joyful shouts. It was even said at that time among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Yes, the Lord has done great things for us and we are overjoyed. Lord, change our circumstances for the better. Let dry streams, like dry streams in the desert, waste. Let those who plant with tears reap the harvest with joyful shouts. Let those who go out crying and carrying their seeds come home with joyful shouts, carrying bales of grain. Bales of grain, church, that's what the psalmist said, overflowing, a cup running over, church. That is my prayer for Mount Zion as we move into our 205th year, that uh, perhaps we don't live in this area anymore, but that our church, that our capital campaign would be a great success, overrunning with uh, God's mercies and glory just flowing down on us and God restoring the temple to a beautiful state where we can still be a presence in Georgetown and that our mouths will be filled with laughter so that all the places where we've been tilling, toiling, planting, that they would all be fruitful for God's glory. Oh, hallelujah. Let us heed your voice, Jesus, calling us out onto the water. Don't be afraid, Mount Zion. I am. May that also be a prayer over your life as the tectonic plates of history are shifting and turning. May you also hear Jesus calling you out onto the water. Don't be afraid. I am. 
Amen. Amen.